Hello, I'm Alice Thorpe and I am here today to show you how to use Adobe Illustrator for the iPad to create professional, sleek and beautiful looking logos. So I am actually a graphic designer and YouTuber and I share my creative journey online showing people how I do what I do and that you can do it too just by following these simple steps. So in this video, I'm actually gonna talk about five easy steps you can do to create professional logos. This includes sourcing fonts, comparing them against each other, looking at the picture as a whole, using a creative brief from a client, and then we're gonna go all the way to exporting it correctly for use online and digitally. Also, how to use mock-ups to really present your work. And I actually also throw in a few bonus tips from designer to designer so that you can really make the most of the tools in Adobe Illustrator and the elements that we have available to you on Envato Elements. So without further ado, get your iPad at the ready, make sure you've got Illustrator loaded and get yourself a comfortable seat. We're gonna get started. We're gonna make some professional logos. So why use Adobe Illustrator for the iPad over the desktop version? And can you combine them both? So Adobe Illustrator for the desktop allows for you to sketch easily and directly into Illustrator. Your sketches are instantly vectorized, so you don't have to worry about screenshotting or scanning anything in. It's all there, ready to go on your iPad. You can also very easily open up your file from Adobe Illustrator for the iPad into your desktop. I'm going to show you how to do this further on in the video. So if you originally create your work in the iPad and you actually want to take it over to your laptop to finalise things, you can very easily do this. And a bonus perk, of course, is that you can take your work anywhere with you. iPads are a lot smaller and easier to carry. so it definitely beats lugging around a laptop. So before we get started with our design, you need to think about who you are designing for. What is your brief? Is this a job for a client or is it self-initiated? Is it something that you're creating for yourself? You need to think of these options before you get going. In this case, we have a design brief. Let's take a look at the design brief. We are Fiori, which means flowers in Italian, and we are an independent florist based in Bath. Our tagline is flowers and things. We offer modern and fresh floral designs for all occasions. We also stock a wide range of homeware, plants and gifts, lovingly curated by our in-house team. We deliver seven days a week to our local area and also ship letterbox parcels throughout the UK. So our branding needs to work well on the shop front, packaging and also on our van. We would love to have a classy and sophisticated logo to complement our vibrant shop. So after looking at your brief, I recommend taking some of the keywords out of it and researching those things. So the keywords that I saw were florist, colourful and sophisticated. So I'm on Pinterest, my favourite place to look, and I'm just looking at existing logos that are related to florists. And then I'm also looking at colour palettes, layout, and really delving in to see what the competitors are doing. An important thing here is to not copy but to find inspiration. So anything that catches your eye, make sure you pin that and save it so you can refer back to it later. I also recommend gathering all the elements, the fonts, the graphics, anything that you need beforehand so you've got them ready to go. So I like to go onto Envato Elements and go through the various categories and just gather bits that again catch my eye. So first up, fonts. I want something sophisticated, yet fun, nothing too 
old fashioned, nothing too retro looking. So what I like to do is scroll down, create a collection for the brand. And I'm just gonna save a bunch of different fonts into the collection so that I can revisit them later and download them. I actually also want to gather some little graphical elements. So I want some floral things. I'm not an illustrator, so I prefer using pre-made elements that are copyright free and okay for me to use. So to do this, I'm just gonna again search floral, scroll down and save the ones that catch my eye. So there are a few different variations and I'm just gonna save it to the collection. And then again, like I said, I can revisit this and then download the ones that I really do enjoy when I'm ready to use them. Another thing I quite enjoy looking for on Envato Elements is mock-ups. So in this case, we are designing a logo. So I want to look for logo mock-ups. So this could include a logo on a piece of paper, maybe on a shop window, or like this one, a stamp. So these mock-ups allow you to download them, place your design in there, and then really get a feel for how your logo will look actually in use rather than just sending your client a flat file you can put it onto something like this like a shop front to really show them how it would work in situation then finally I'm actually going to look for some photos so I quite like to use photos as inspiration I could pick colors from these or I could place the logo that I've created in front of them to again add another layer of display and presentation for my client so there we have all of the collection. I actually have this shared so you guys can see it for yourselves and download and use the things that I've used in this video. It's now time to start sketching. So I've opened up Adobe Illustrator in my iPad. I'm gonna use just a basic A4 canvas in landscape so that it fills my screen and straight up I'm going to go to the left hand side and use the blob brush tool. So this brush allows me to change how it looks, it can taper at the end, so let's say you're really good at calligraphy, you want to incorporate some of that into your logo, you could use a brush like this and use Illustrator to do that straight away. However, I am not well versed on calligraphy, so I'm going to stick to fonts. So I am taking this circle, I'm holding the button down in the bottom corner to constrain it to be perfectly circular. And all we're going to do is sketch out. Now you can see my amazing artistry skills here. I've drawn some beautiful flowers. The main thing for this stage of the design is to just kind of let loose don't overthink it, don't worry about your drawings being a little bit naff, it's okay. Just kind of get an idea, put the ideas that you have in your head onto a piece of paper, scribble them all down and really play around with the different layouts. So you can see I've used circles, I've used squares, I'm going to use ovals, I'm thinking of the logo mark with that plain F and we're just playing around and getting like I said, the ideas out of my brain and onto a piece of paper. And if you wanted to, you could use a traditional piece of paper, but I prefer using Adobe Illustrator because then I have everything ready to go in my iPad. Once you've got your ideas down on paper and you have a basic understanding of the direction you're going in, then it's time to get going and just start designing. So I like to first look at different fonts. So I've just clicked the text tool and I'm actually gonna import some fonts. So remember those fonts from Envato Elements? I have them on my iPad. I'm gonna install them and use them and compare them against each other. So what I like to do, I download maybe like six or seven different fonts, quite different styles. Some of them will be serif, some of them won't. And I just write out the brand name copy and paste them and change the font. This is so I can see straight up what I think will work, what I think won't. Because when you're saving these fonts from Envato, you don't actually see them in use. You don't see them being used with your brand name. So for example, this one, I didn't like it when it said Fiori. I also didn't like this one. I thought it was too, I don't know. It just looked a bit unprofessional. 
playing around with this one, maybe you could capitalise them. So yeah, like I say, compare and contrast the fonts, be quite critical, think of what you would like to see as a consumer of this business. So I kind of narrowed it down to these three fonts and then I found this script font which was quite fun and using the script font I compared that and got rid of any that I didn't like and I ended up with these two. Again these fonts are saved in that collection so you can use them yourself if you want to but we are going to take these two fonts and develop that a little bit further. So with my three favourite fonts on the top, I also want to import the sketches. So whether you sketched on a piece of paper or like me, you did it in Illustrator, I want you to put that on your screen too so you can always refer back to it and see where you're going, see the direction. The first one I'm going to make is actually this circle one. So I'm taking the circle tool and you can see it's not constrained at all. It's kind of free flowing. So if I click the circle in the bottom left corner and hold it, you'll see it kind of constrains it. So it'll either draw from the middle if you hold the outside of the circle or if you hold the center, it will draw from that single point. So this makes you draw perfect circles. Little bonus tip for you there. So taking that circle we've just drawn, I'm going to resize the text. This is where you can really experiment with the layout and just play around with it. So I'm going to take the circle and I'm actually going to click the duplicate button, which appears below it, duplicate it four times and then change the size of those duplicated circles. Then highlighting both the circle and the text, I'm going to go to the right in the type options and click type on a path. This then uses both that shape and the text and makes it sort of right around it. It's quite a fun effect, so definitely have a play around with that. And then I'm going to use the same method for the tagline. So I've highlighted both the tagline and the inner circle, go into the text tool on the right and then type on a path and you can see that it's typed around that circle so you can really see how it fits into shape. From here I'm going to play around with the text itself so I can change the tracking and I can change the font. I actually decided against that script text, I thought it didn't look as professional as I wanted it to so just experiment, don't stick to the first idea you came up with, have a play around, change the sizes, change the positions, change the fonts themselves and really have a deep dive into how you can challenge this brief. We're now going to add some graphics or icons to our designs. So. I'm back in my collection on Invata Elements and I'm going to download a selection of my favourites and just make sure they're ready to go on my iPad. I love these floral hand-drawn ones. Like I said earlier on, I'm not an illustrator, so I'm going to keep this to the professionals. I'm going to let them do what they do best and I'm going to use my graphic design skills to put everything together. So you can see I've kind of got a different selection of things. There was these flowers that looked a little bit more like a tattoo. There was the more delicate ones and if you scroll down underneath you'll see that it shows you similar graphics or more from that same creator. So if there's a particular style that you like the look of you can do this, find similar ones and again just add these to your collection so they're ready to use and download when you need them later on. I actually download mine to my iCloud Drive. I've numbered them all from 1 to 10 and I've also created a folder with the fonts. This just makes it so much easier when I get into designing rather than kind of having an argument with my poor file structure. Another little bonus tip for you there, make sure you keep your files organised. As a graphic designer you end up with so many files so making sure they're all named correctly and easy to find is a great way to stay efficient and not get overwhelmed. So with all my files sorted and in my iCloud, I can see the ones I want, drag them into my Illustrator app and play around with the placement. So this is really, really simple. This is just a PNG. 
This next one here is actually an SVG file, so it's a vector file. And I actually also found a whole collection of other SVG files, which gives me a lot more creative control because I can change the colors of them and they are infinitely scalable. So no matter how big or small I make these ones, they will still remain sharp and clear. You won't see any pixels. That's the beauty of using Adobe Illustrator to create logos over using software such as Photoshop. So what I'm doing here is actually using the cut and the eraser tool to erase some of the stroke where the flower overlaps the circle. And I feel like this adds just a little bit more of a professional touch. So that's my experimenting with the circle one done. I'm now going to sort of take a brief look back at my initial sketches and I'm recreating the ones that I've made here. So this one's really simple. I just changed the tracking and the sizes and I'm just, I mean, you can see it for yourself. I'm really experimenting with a wide range of different layouts. I've brought over this floral element. I'm using the trick of deleting the strokes again, but this time it's in a square. So yeah, like I say or keep saying is just really experiment. Don't stay to one idea mix it up, really see and do the things that you initially didn't think would work because you never know. That's what design is all about. It's all about experimenting, sort of putting new things together, making new combinations and seeing what works and what doesn't. In this case, I tried to make this F work with the flower. Didn't really work, so we kind of scrapped that one. Now, this next step might seem counterproductive and trust me, I thought it was when I first tried this, but I recommend sleeping on it. Yes, that means putting down your iPad, walking away and revisiting it later. This just means that you can look at your work with a fresh pair of eyes. Do you know when you've been staring at one particular word for so long, it almost loses its meaning? That is so bound to happen when you're staring at your design for hours on end. So we are going to take the night, have a breather, and now we're going to head back into Illustrator. It's now time to take a step back and really look at your work. I want you to look at the pros and cons of the designs. I want you to picture what they would look like on a smaller scale, on a larger scale, I want you to think about how these would be produced on paper as well as digitally and really narrow it down. So for me, these were the final two designs that I liked the most. You'll see that I've copied the artboard, so I do still have the original designs, but I'm going to use these on a new artboard and develop them a little bit further. It is all about designing and redesigning. So here you can see I've changed the font thickness, I'm changing the tracking and I'm comparing them against each other. Turns out I actually still preferred the top one so I got rid of that new version and stuck to my original thoughts. So these are the two sort of iterations of the logo that we have. We're now going to move on to perfecting and enhancing these logos. Now it's important when designing logos to think of the different ways it's going to be used. So it's a good idea to have a logo mark, which is like a small symbol or a small representation of the larger picture. So in this case, it's just the floral part in the square. I'm going to use that as my logo mark. And I actually am playing around with using just the F part of the name within that square. So this could be a good little icon for a stamp maybe, or the favicon on a website. So you do really need to think about the different layouts and the different formats. So you can see we have the full square logo and then we have just the type, we have the logo mark and then we have the F with the logo mark too. Now it's time for the fun part, which is playing with color. So one of my favorite websites is Adobe Color, which allows you to search for various color palettes according to theme, according to color, according to style. So the beauty of using Adobe Color means that you can sync it to your library. So if you see a color palette that you like 
and you have an Adobe account, you can click save and it will automatically add it into your Adobe Illustrator app and across all your Adobe platforms. So what I'm doing is scrolling down, I searched floral and I'm gonna look at different color combos. There's also this option on the top where you can search by trends. So you can look at current trendy color combos. So straight up, I went onto the graphic design ones and I wanted to see sort of what's trending right now, the color combos that could work together, something that I've not necessarily already thought of. So I saved a bunch of these and I'll show you them back in Adobe Illustrator in a second. Another website that I love is Colors. So this actually also comes as an app and this is sort of like a color palette generator. So you can click generate in the top left hand corner and it will just generate random colors. Again, like Adobe Color, you can search via theme or color or mood and you can also upload images and it will extract the colors from them, which again, Adobe Color does too. So there are a lot of different options you can do. You can adjust them singly or separately. You can get the hex codes, the RGB codes, and really dive deep into the world of color theory. So yeah, I definitely recommend having a look at these two websites if you want to kind of experiment with color and think of different combos that you might not have originally thought of yourself. Moving back into Adobe Illustrator, we're now going to have a play around with those colors. So if I open the color palette and go down, you'll see here that I have a bunch of themes. And if I scroll down, you'll see a few of the ones that I have just saved. Now, the one that I enjoy the most is this kind of like earthy one. So what I want to do is draw a few swatches. So basically, I'm going to draw some squares. So I draw a square, duplicate it a few times copy it down and I'm gonna keep this at the side of my new artboard. This is just so I can always refer back to those colors and use them for reference as I'm working. So once I've got those colors, I'm gonna copy down the logos. I always recommend copying your work rather than kind of working over it because if at any point you want to revert back to something you did a couple of days ago, you won't have saved it. So make sure you copy things down. Then what I'm gonna do is take those swatches, put them in the background and overlay the logos and sort of display them in a variety of different ways. So I'm sort of getting my client to picture how I would like the logos to look. So as you can see, I've dragged over the logo. I want to make the background quite light so I can show an example of a black logo. Then underneath with this sort of mustard color, I want to show an example of a white logo. So you can sort of see and demonstrate how the logo would work depending on what kind of background it was on. Then I'm actually also gonna use a third color. So I went for the pink and I also adjusted the layout a little bit. This is just another fun way of displaying your work rather than just sending your client a plain file. They could use this as almost a little style sheet and an idea of how to sort of represent their business through their logos. Then I'm dragging in this single just text logo and I'm gonna use four different colors for this. I'm gonna separate them using the align tool on the right. So if you see, I'm clicked on align, I'm gonna distribute evenly and it spread them all out equally. Saves me a job. <laughs> then I'm gonna take the logo mark and also apply that in a few different colors and just really lay it out so you can get a good overview and representation of what your logos and logo marks will look like on a variety of different colors. So yeah, I'm just gonna speed through this, but you can kind of see I'm using the align tool. I am copying everything. I'm making sure each one is represented in a different way and I'm laying it out in an aesthetically pleasing way so my client can always revisit this and sort of see how they, how they all work together. Now you've done all the hard work, you're happy with your design, you now need to make sure that your files are exporting in the right format in a great quality file. So head up to the top right hand corner, click that little box with the arrow in it and click export. 
a new menu will appear and you'll see your three artboards. Then you need to click export as. I want you to either select the whole artboard or select a single element within it. So if you look down the left hand side, I've selected PNG. I've also clicked the export selection button. You can change the color mode and then click export and choose where you want it to be saved. You can also export it as an Adobe Illustrator file. So if you have Adobe Illustrator on your laptop, you can open it via that. Or if a client needs it as an Illustrator file or an SVG file, anything like that, you can also export it like that too. Finally, I actually want to show you how you can display your work in a professional manner. So I'm going to use Place It by Envato and in here you can use mockups and it's all done for you. So no technical knowledge needed. You can just drag in your images and logos and voila, it's done. So I actually searched florist in the top bar and I found this really cool template of a florist with an apron. So you can add your logo to this apron. So all you do is insert file on the left hand side, click on the PNG you've just saved, click the image, resize it and there you go. I actually at first imported a black coloured logo and I realised I wanted a white one so I re-exported it added it in, changed the colour of the apron and there we go, you can see the logo in use. I actually did this for a bunch of different aprons so I'm just going to go through, you can sort of see how you can very easily show clients what their logo would look like and then finally I found this one where you can sort of mock up a window sticker of the logo so you can again show how it would look in real life. And one last bonus little tutorial for you guys is how I use the Photoshop mockups from Envato Elements to display logos. So it's similar to place it, you just go into the file. On the right hand side you'll see my layers and usually in a mockup it will tell you where to double click or it'll say your design here. Then you double click on that thumbnail and again like place it, insert your logo design, change the colour of it if needs be, add a background and there you go, there you have your logo in situation. Now there are hundreds and thousands of mock-ups available on Envato so you could really go to town with this. You'll see that I have this glass window one here which is really nice with like the brick texture I thought it suited the sophisticated vibe and I actually also decided to do a van so this again followed the same principle just with the layers you double click on the one it tells you to add in your different elements and you can see I've added these flowers and then I also actually did some postal boxes I created a little pattern for the sides put a stamp in the center and created three different colored postal boxes using the brand colours that I'd found earlier. So let's have a quick recap on what we've covered in today's video. So first up we gathered our inspiration and ideas. We thought about who our client was, what it was they wanted and any key words that they mentioned in their design brief. Then we went on to collect elements, fonts, anything that we wanted to include within our work and we sketched out our initial ideas without holding back. Then first drafts, we tried out different fonts, compared them and really changed the layout and experimented with the logo that we wanted to create. Then most importantly, we took a step back Take a second to have a look at your work, think about it critically and really decide what you like and what you don't. Maybe you could even sleep on it and look at it in the morning, but ultimately it's your decision to pick the design you like the best. Or if it's client work, it's their decision too. Then finally, we perfected everything. So we found our favourite, we added colours, we tweaked parts, we played around with the tracking on the text and the font itself and of course we mocked them up. So using Place It by Envato or the bonus of Photoshop we can show our logos in a professional manner and there you have it. 
you can design professional logos using Adobe Illustrator for the iPad. That's it, we did it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have found the tips that I've shared really valuable and I hope you enjoy creating some super professional logos moving forward. Thank you very much for watching. I am Alice Thorpe and I'll see you next time.